Hi guys, welcome back to the Financial Interest YouTube channel. My name's Dan. So I've just finished reading uh, Richer, Wiser, Happier by William Green. And I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of go over some of the key uh, things I found in the book that were really useful. So let's get on with the video. So we'll just cover a bit of background about William Green. He's a British born journalist and author who moved to the US around 25 years ago. And over his career, he's written articles for lots of magazines, for The Economist, The New Yorker, Forbes, Barron's, and like many others. And the book draws inspiration from the many super investors that he's interviewed over the past 25 years. People like Sir John Templeton, Howard Marks, Bill Miller, Charlie Munger, Monish Pabrai, Nick Sleep, and the kind of list goes on as a great who's who of um, all the best value investors of our time. But also, William Green decided he wasn't just going to focus on the great money makers. He was actually going to focus on the people who were admirable, like had really strong ethics and moral values. The kind of people who can be really great role models to everyone. And this really allows them to be successful in their investments and in their lives and actually have really a lot greater fulfillment in what they're doing. And also over the last few months, uh, William Green has also done a number of interviews for podcasts that I listen to. So back in June, he did an interview for the Invested podcast with Phil and Daniel Town. And then recently he just did an interview as well with the Investing with Tom podcast. So I'd highly recommend that you go and listen to those as well, because you're going to get a little bit of extra stories that, that don't appear in the book. And it's good to also hear it coming from, you know, like actually William Green talking about his experience. So I'll leave the links to those podcasts in the description as well so you can go and listen to those. So let's take a look at what the chapters are in the book. So we've got chapter one features the man who cloned Warren Buffett, how to succeed by shamelessly borrowing other people's best ideas. So some of the things you really learn from chapter one in the book that features quite a lot of Munish Pabrai is obviously he's kind of made himself famous from cloning Warren Buffett. It kind of goes to say there's, there's nothing wrong with doing that to like look at what someone's done successfully and then kind of make that work for yourself. And one of the keys here that Monish goes back to mentioning is um, you have to have an inner scorecard. You're only playing against yourself at the end of the day. And you should also try and hang around other people who actually bring out the best in you or make you better. If you hang around with like really great people, then obviously their influence is going to rub off on you and you're going to also kind of take on their, their characteristics and habits as well. Then chapter two is the willingness to be lonely. And this is the idea that to beat the market, you must be brave enough, independent enough and strange enough to stray from the crowd. And chapter two is it starts off talking about Sir John Templeton. And the idea here is the great investors there, they have the willingness to be lonely because if you've got everyone else thinks one thing is going to happen, the whole market is going one way. But you've kind of found something else within that and you strongly believe that you're right. You're going kind of against everyone and you've got to have a certain amount of fortitude and strength of character to be able to make your bet one way when everyone is selling out of the market and you still can see the opportunity there to buy. And that's kind of where you really separate the, the great investors when it's kind of times of crisis. Chapter three focuses around everything changes. And this is about how can we make smart decisions when nothing stays the same and the future is unknowable. And chapter three is one I really enjoyed. And the start of it kind of um, talks about Howard Marks. And this features the Zen concept of mujo or impermanence. So this is the kind of idea that everything is constantly changing. Nothing will stay the same. And throughout the book, you'll get a lot of references to books which have influenced these great investors. And even just on that basis, it's like you will get a great reading list of things you can go back and um, read all things from ancient philosophy to actual investing books themselves, like the classics like The Intelligent Investor, right through to kind of um, Buddhism and things like that. So the idea is that we can't control the future, so we shouldn't try to do that or we shouldn't even worry about that. We just need to be sure that we understand that the future is going to be unpredictable and all we can do is know that that's going to happen and build a structure of our portfolio to deal with that. And there is one really good example of this and it's a story from uh, Joel Greenblatt and I think this is back in the 1980s. He was working for a company and they were, I believe it was like a mergers company and they were about to acquire a business merger in um, for a theme park in Florida. It was a fairly straightforward deal. Looks like it was definitely going to go through. And then one day, um, 
Joel Greenblatt opened the Wall Street Journal and he saw that the pavilion which was part of the park had actually fallen into a sinkhole and then obviously <laughs> obviously this kind of uh, destroyed the whole deal and if anything kind of tells you that the world is unpredictable if you think that you were just about to sell something and then the main part of the building fell into a sinkhole then that kind of really illustrates that you, you have no idea what is going to happen in the future so you should always be prepared for the worst case scenario and the great investors learn how to manage the adversity as well and then into chapter four we have the resilient investor and in the book this is named how to build enduring wealth and survive the wilderness that lies in wait and this chapter features the idea of resilient wealth creation and Berkshire Hathaway is a really great example of a company who's built itself um, resilient wealth. They have a really strong cash position, minimal amounts of debt. And these are really things that you need to do because you need to be able to survive a market crash. And the way that uh, Berkshire has kind of structured its whole business is to be able to do that. So this is like keeping like a lot of cash to hand, avoiding debt and leverage making sure the balance sheet is strong. So you want to avoid companies where they have a lot of debt or leverage because this is not gonna be a good investment when things go bad and they will go bad at some point. That's just the way the market cycles move. And then chapter five, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And it's a long and winding search for the simplest path to stellar returns. So this chapter really features on the idea of simplicity. We can kind of really break investing down into its most basic idea that you need to be able to value an asset and then just pay a lot less than the asset is worth. And then if you do that over time, you're certain that you will make money. Obviously, just because it's uh, quite a simple thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy. And this is where you have to have a lot of different kind of mental characteristics that are gonna allow you to be able to do that. Chapter six is Nick and Zach's Excellent Adventure. And I like the reference here to uh, Bill and Ted's. <laughs> and it's a radically unconventional investment partnership that reveals that the richest rewards go to those who resist the law of instant gratification. And looking into chapter six, so this is uh, probably one of the most popular chapters I've seen flying around amongst all the uh, value investors. And this is uh, Nick Sleep and Kai Sakaria. And they had a fund called Nomad. And the idea where the name came from from that is that they're kind of prepared to go anywhere. So like nomadic to actually find the best investments. And they would perform something that they call destination analysis. So they would look at a business and figure out where should the business be in 20 years. And then obviously work back from there and look at what steps they need to make for the business to be at that destination. And they'll also look at what could prevent the company from reaching that, that destination that they need to get to. So this is a kind of different thought approach and something that they did with uh, great success. And also another interesting thing about them is the way that they structured their portfolio. So they structured it in a way that they wouldn't actually make money unless their kind of returns were over a certain amount. So everything they did was trying to make it more appealing to their investors. And once they couldn't kind of return any more value to, um, to the investors, they actually shut down the fund because they got to a size where they couldn't keep up the returns. So they just returned all of the money to their investors. And chapter seven features high performance habits. And this is the idea that the best investors build an overwhelming competitive advantage by adopting habits whose benefits can compound over time. And Nick Sleep calls this the aggregation of marginal gains. And that phrase was coined by Sir David Brailsford, who is the coach for the British Olympic cycling team. And they had huge success in Beijing in 2008 and also in the London Olympics. And I remember watching um, the London Olympics when I was living there, just seeing how good that they were with the cycling. And this all came from analysing every single part of the cycling, the fitness of the athletes, the bikes, and just trying to kind of improve every area just a small bit and the idea of that is that those marginal gains will compound together to make a huge difference in the performance and we could see that that was definitely the case with the British cycling team at that time and that also applies to to investing as well just trying to make small marginal gains on your knowledge your temperament and these are all things that will eventually compound over time to give you like great returns as well. And another idea that comes into this is the idea that these investors go further. They kind of really go the extra mile. One of the people they feature is Laura Gerritz, and she's the CEO of Ronjaw Global Advisors. And they're a company who invests in a lot of different foreign markets. So Laura will kind of travel a lot, trying to dig deep into the foreign markets to see where she can find value. And she will look at things like 
when she goes to a new place, she will always read three different books about the place, whether it's like literature or a crime novel. She will try and get a very good idea of the characteristics of a country. And that is what actually gives her an edge. So this is another interesting idea that we can kind of look that those super investors, they really do go the extra mile in terms of their research. And chapter eight is don't be a fool. Now this is something you'll hear from Charlie Munger. It's one of the key things that he talks about and chapter eight features him. And Charlie Munger says, as a safeguard against stupidity, imagine a dreadful outcome. Work backwards by asking yourself what misguided actions might lead you to that sorry fate and then scrupulously avoid that self-destructive behavior. And Charlie says it's very difficult to be smart so this is where the inversion comes in. So rather than trying to be smart, we should focus on not being stupid. So if you look at all of the potential stupid things that we could do, and then we can try and eliminate them, and then almost by default, we end up getting to a good result. And what you'll always find great about Charlie is just his honesty. He will always admit when they make mistakes and always try to learn from the mistakes. And you will have seen this if you watched any of the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meetings. He's always very, uh, very open and honest about what they've done, what they've done wrong and when they've made mistakes. And this is a really strong um, character trait from Charlie. And I think it's one that everyone should learn something from. And the epilogue to the book is Beyond Rich. And this kind of goes on to say that money matters, but it's not the essential ingredient to an abundant life. And the epilogue at the end of the book features Arnold Vandenberg. And Arnold Vandenberg is the person who William Green kind of admires most of all the people he's met. And he used to hypnotize himself every day to focus his scattered thoughts so he could kind of teach himself to be more positive. And that's a lesson that I think we can, we can all take away. So from looking through the book, I really wanted to characterize some of the key points I took from the book. So let's have a look at those now. So the first characteristic I noted is that the super investors deliberately avoid noise. So you'll find they live far away from Wall Street. They're able to kind of just tune out all of the noise and just focus on what matters. And as we've seen in some of the stories, they go the extra mile to research companies and they're not afraid to go against the consensus of the majority. They always aim to stay in the game. They recognize their own limitations and avoid situations which could cause them to make questionable decisions. And they focus on holding positions for the long term. And they're not driven by self-serving principles, such as how much money they can make from fees. So just to conclude, I really enjoyed reading the book. It's got so many great references and like a wealth of advice and knowledge from all of the great investors in the world. And I don't think you will find anything that's got that much information packed into such a short amount of pages as it has in this book. I'm almost certain this is going to go on to become... Um, possibly one of the greatest uh, value investing books ever written. So William Green has done a great job in how he's kind of married the childhood stories of all the investors, their characteristics, and kind of what sets them apart from all the other investors. And he kind of gives a framework within all of the chapters on how you can also be a successful investor. But that is kind of tempered with a bit of caution saying that obviously you need to have a certain temperament and not everybody can do this. So although these people have made a lot of money and become hugely successful people, they have very rare characteristics like strength of character and being able to kind of go against the grain. And not everyone can do this. And the important thing here is that you recognize that. And that's kind of one of the key things throughout the book as a theme. It's all about the self-awareness. You should be able to kind of see the areas where you know you don't have the characteristics to be able to, to do that. And that's the kind of key. So anyone can do it, but it's not an easy thing to do. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. Also consider subscribing to the channel as well if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, what did you think about the book? Have you already read it or is it on your to-do list? Let me know the stories you enjoyed the most from the book. And I will leave you with this quote from Arnold Vandenberg. And this is one of the role models that William Green singles out from all the other people mentioned in the book. I feel wealthier, not because I have more money, but because I have health, good friendships, and I've got great family. Prosperity takes all of these into consideration. Health, wealth, happiness, and peace of mind. That's what a prosperous person is, not just lots of money. That does not mean anything. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.